In a previous video, I showed you how you can use code to make 3D prints, such as this battery box. But while I was printing some battery boxes on my K1C from Creality, I was getting this stringing. I'll show you how I eliminated it and how to make your own battery boxes with code on today's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by MicroSwiss. In that previous video, I showed you that Tinkercad.com has code blocks, which is a free program that allows you to use code similar to Arduino, but to design 3D prints. I was shopping at my local Harbor Freight tool store. They had batteries really cheap, and then they said 30% off these low prices, so I bought a bunch. But now I needed battery boxes. So I went to the gallery in code blocks in Tinkercad, and I found this dynamic cylinder storage box, which is basically a battery box generator. I copied the code, and then I ran it set up for AA batteries and a 4x4 arrangement, and this is the design it created. So I printed that out, and it worked good. The batteries fit nicely, and the cover came out fairly solid. But it only covers the batteries and leaves this gap, and it's really, really loose. So I decided I'm going to adjust the code and make it the way I want. The first thing I did was create a variable called lid, and then I added a set lid to a number, in this case one. But I set it so one is if you want to have a cover, and zero if you don't. Then I scrolled down to the lid section, and I added an if-then block and put everything inside of it. Plus, I used a logical mathematic here where it said lid equals one. So if lid equals one, then make me a lid. And then I modified the lid design. So I took what it had and I added four millimeters to it in the X and Y direction and also rounded the edges a bit. So this made it a little bit bigger than the base. But then the cutout, which is a hole, I made that only one millimeter bigger than the base. So this way, when the two are combined, I'm gonna have a three millimeter wall that should fit right over the base. So then I ran the program and you can see it came out rounded and it should fit over the top of this box. I printed this kind of fast and rough, but the lid fits perfectly over the top of the box, just like I wanted. And there's a little bit of gap at the bottom for the base, and then you just lift the cover off, and there's your batteries. Now after I printed, I noticed I was getting this stringing on the corners. And I actually have seen this on other prints. In fact, I printed some white, and it was worse. So this machine has been doing this for a while, and I've been wanting to try a different hot end. Fortunately, I have two Creality K1C machines, so I can run a side-by-side -side test. On one machine, I'm going to have a MicroSwiss Flowtech hot end that looks like this. On the other machine, I'm going to stick with the stock Creality hot end. The MicroSwiss hot end is easy to install and comes with a full sheet of instructions and all the parts you need. This is the extension that goes up into the heatsink. You add some thermal conductive paste to it and then you slide it up into the heatsink. Now I took my heatsink off because it was easier, but you don't have to do this, you can slide it up in there. But then you have to put the screw on on one side and then put the hot end onto that screw and install the second screw. This is the hot end assembly. Then put the heat block back in place if you removed it. Then install the nozzle by hand and tighten it with a seven millimeter socket. Then put everything else back in place that you removed and you're ready to go. So now I can run a side-by-side -side MicroSwiss Hot End versus Creality on a K1C. I'm going to use the same filament, the Hyper PLA from Creality, this case red. I'm going to use the same G-code file sliced in Orca Slicer. At a 0.24 layer height and a 15% infill, they both came out pretty good on the base. But I noticed that the Creality had that stringing, but the MicroSwiss did not. So it looks like the MicroSwiss Hot End corrects any issues I'm having with this Creality Hot End. So if you're seeing this issue on your K1C, you might consider getting a MicroSwiss Flowtech hot end for your machine. So now back to the code for the battery box. I have these 23A batteries, and I didn't find it on the original list. I've since added it here. But what I did was measure the length of the battery, 28.3, and the diameter, a little over 10 millimeters. And then I added that in a comment, 23A, 10.5 millimeters, 28.5 height. Then I changed the cylinder diameter to 10.5, the height to 28.5, and then did a 4x4 four four box, and then ran the generator. And just like before, it formed all the holes, and then formed the box cover, and then I printed it out in a gold PLA, and it came out perfect. No stringing, and it looks really good. 
So now instead of searching online for a bunch of different boxes or going to the Tinkercad and manually designing different boxes, I can just have it generate all different sizes and shapes and fill the boxes with all these batteries. So I'll put a link to the dynamic cylinder storage box from gd.ritter so you can modify the code any way you want. You don't have to stick with circles, you can make it squares or whatever shapes you want. You could have a lot of fun with this. If you want more detail on how code blocks work, click on the link in the upper corner and it'll take you to my video. I want to shout out a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Many of you have been with me for a long time and I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.